Excellent. Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Michael Bruce, and uh, I am thrilled. Uh, I'd like to say, but being a visiting priest, it's kind of weird for me to say welcome <laughs> to your church. Um, it's great to be here with you all today. Uh, I am the Diocesan Youth and Family Ministry Developer Coordinator, which means one Sunday a month I get to travel to the breadths of the diocese uh, and, uh, and visit with congregations and let them know what is sort of happening and what the hopes and dreams for the Diocese of Capel are. Fortunately, today that means I get to be with you, uh, and I am thrilled to be here. Um, it's uh, an honor and a joy to worship with you. But before we begin our worship, let's take a moment and recognize that we are on Treaty 4 territory. The traditional homelands of the Cree, the Ojibwe, the Soto, the Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, uh, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Reconciliation is at the heart of what it means to recognize the land that we're on in a spirit of reconciliation, the spirit of Christ that has brought us and all people into the kingdom of heaven. As we get ready to prepare to begin our service today, we're going to see the energy of the palms, blessing of the palms, and hearing the story of Jesus' triumphal entrance into Jerusalem. Uh, yeah, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> and we begin in the hall. So if anyone is joining us on Zoom uh, and wondering why they're looking at an empty church, we are all in the hall, and you'll see us process in with joy and great, uh, great triumph at that moment. But you get to hear us, so that's wonderful. Um, we will begin in a moment on page 297, the Green uh, Book of Alternative Services. Two ninety-seven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered into the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise. But the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today, we greet him as our king, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the res resurrection by the way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby you give us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. 
When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd invite you to hold up your palms or your palm crosses for the blessing. Lord be with you. Let us praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The He is Messiah and King, branches in their hand. May we also, carrying these emblems, forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you uh, in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. And we sing together hymn number 181 in your blue books. This morning we also sing hymn number 182.
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son was crucified yet entered into glory, may we, walking in the way of the cross, find it is for us the way of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'd invite the congregation to be seated for the proclamation of God's holy word. The first reading is Isaiah 54 to 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher <clears throat> that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 31, and we will not sing the psalm and rather speak it all, all together. Have mercy on me, God, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. The second reading is from Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, <clears throat> he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn this morning is... Uh, the Royal Banners Forward Go. It's hymn number 186, and I'd invite you to stand.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now Jesus stood before the government. Governor and the government asked him. Sorry, I'm on the wrong page. Are you going to tell us to sit? Oh, please be seated. This is a fairly long gospel. Um, <laughs> And so uh, I would invite you to stand when we get to the part where Jesus is at Gethsemane. And so I'll, I'll, if I remember, I'll give you a wink and, uh, and ask you to stand then. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no, him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to releasing a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. And while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. So the governor said to them, Which of these two would you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus to the governor's headquarters. And when they gathered the whole cohort around him, they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail Jesus, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. 
and then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They, they compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Gogatha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. Please stand. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits who were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Who would, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, among the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge and filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs were also emptied, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered into the holy city, and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what had took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the kids to come forward for a kid's talk. Hello. Wonderful. What do you guys normally do? I'm, I, this is my first time here. So do you sit down? Okay, you can sit down. Do I sit down? You can sit on that chair there. I'm going to try to sit on... Oh, there's a chair. Oh, don't I feel all big and important with a chair? All right. So guys, I need your help today. How do you know when something's important? Yeah? When someone's yelling for help. When someone's yelling for help, yes. That is a definite no way to know it's important. Giving somebody help, if somebody needs help, that's important. How else do you know if something's important? Mm-hmm. If it means something to you, yeah, absolutely. How do you know? If you're hurt, yeah. If, if you're like in trouble, absolutely, that's important. Yeah? When you run away? You run away if something's important? Do you run away from dinner? Dinner's important. You go, oh, no, I don't want to eat any food. Ah. No. Yeah? You can run away and try to get help? Absolutely. Mm hmm Yeah? Run away and get help? We're having a lot of running away. 
<laughs> yeah? Do you guys think that the story we read today is important? You don't know. I think it's one of the most important stories that we ever read. And in some ways, the church does really fun things to try to make it important. One of the ways that they, they try to show that it's important is we do something a little bit different. Do we always start church out in the hall and carry palm branches in? Yep, okay, car crashing into tree. I'm not sure how that will happen in the hall, but it, that would be a problem. We don't always start church that way. So we do something a little bit different sometimes. We tell a different story. We, we play acted the same thing that we heard in the story, carrying palm branches when Jesus came into Jerusalem. We did the same thing. We also wear a different color today. We don't wear red very often. And one of my favorite things is up on the altar. That's all red with all the pretty uh, lace work and the red burst and veil on top. It shows that something's a little bit different today. We try to do things to just highlight and make things ever so slightly different. And when things are different, sometimes you take a better notice, right? Like if your teacher comes into school and slams the book instead of saying, hi, everyone, welcome, would you go like, whoa, maybe she's in a bad mood? Maybe. So by doing things in a little bit of a different way is a way to say that, hey, this is important. And you pay attention. You, you notice things in a special way. So one of the things that I'm here to do today is not only tell all the adults and all those people that the story that we just read is important, but one of my jobs in the church is to look after and to try to make sure that there are things for children and young people. And the reason I'm doing that is because children and young people are very important in the church. So it's true. I saw somebody give me a look going, hmm, really? <laughs> it's true. Jesus loves all of us, and we're invited to love each other. And so I want to let you guys know today, if you haven't heard it today, that the church thinks that you guys are very important. That one day, it's going to be your kids who are sitting up at the front, and you're going to be sitting in the pews listening to these stories. And that's a beautiful thing. And that the church thinks that as a generation, as, as something that we're doing here is really important. And you're important. The stories that we tell are important. And we get to do incredibly important things today. So I wanted to say thank you, you guys. And I think you head off to Sunday school at this point? Okay. All right. And for the congregation, I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Does anyone feel like they have a little bit of liturgical whiplash? Because that's what I feel like. The story that we came into was the story of Jesus' triumphal entry. How everything was great. The people were all on his side. And the gospel that I just read was anything but. As a story in the church, as I said to the kids, these are important stories, and how we present them brings meaning with them. I know of one or two different pastors in the city and different places that have decided to cut out this second gospel reading entirely today and only focus on the palms, because this is Palm Sunday, and if you want to hear the dark and, and painful stuff, you need to come to Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. Uh, and, and otherwise, you're just going to get Palm Sunday and Easter, and you really should come to those services. And if we don't talk about it today, that come. That's a choice. Uh, I'm not sure that that's the choice we always should make. And it's not the choice that those who have gone before us in our faith often make. They pair the triumphal entrance with the story of Jesus on a cross, the story of Jesus' death. And they put those together, and they present them to us today, and they ask us the question, so where is God in all of this? I think that's a good question. I think it's important. Paul, in recalling the Christ hymn in Philippians, our second reading today, said, Jesus humbled himself, taking the form of a slave, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. It gives us a hint about where God is. One of my guiding philosophies in life is that faith has to meet us in our real lives. 
It has to be applicable on Tuesday as much as it is on Sunday. And you know what? Sometimes on Tuesday, I forget about what I just said on Sunday. I know I wear this collar, I wear this funny robe, I should be better at this, but sometimes I forget. I get caught up in the busyness of trying to secure funding to get people to clay or to youth gatherings. I get caught up in what is this going on and how do I rent out the rectory of a previous parish with making sure. I get caught up in the day-to-day -day busyness of the life and sometimes it's hard to connect where Jesus fits in all of that. But today, today we have a different message. Today we hear not just about the good times when Jesus comes into the holy city, but we hear about the very worst of times. We hear about loss and betrayal and suffering. And God is present in both of those stories. That's the thing that connects today's gospel reading that we had out in the hall with the gospel reading we had right here. That's the thing that connects the highest points of life to the lowest points of life. That God is present in it all. God is there. It's very easy to think that God's with me when things are going well. It's very easy to think God is great when, you know, things are just running smoothly and uh, we're doing what we normally do and we're comfortable and it's great. God loves me. It's a lot harder to think that when the future is uncertain. There is change on the horizon. We don't know what the next steps look like, which direction they'll be. But the message that we have in Palm Sunday is that God is with us. See, I don't know about you, but one of the things that really terrifies me is the thought of being alone. Being alone is one of the worst things. If you're going through something awful, Going through something awful on your own is worse. Trying to hide it, trying to keep it to yourself is always worse than having your community support you. I think that's one of God's, or one of Jesus' truly saving acts, is to say that even in the lowest lows of our life, we're not alone. We're not alone. God walks with us. God shares with us. God wants to be in communication and conversation and relationship with us. Not in some fake or arbitrary way, but in a way to say, you're not on your own. I care for you. I love you. I'm willing to go to the darkest places on my own for you so you don't have to. How beautiful is that? I'm not sure we'd get that same message if we skipped putting these highs and lows together. I'm not sure we would be able to recognize just how deep God's love is if we didn't experience the high, the mountaintop and the valley. If we didn't experience those moments where we're adrift and can see the whole landscape of how things are and those moments when we're down in the mud with the rabbits. God cares. God is present with this community, with this diocese. It's easy to wonder what God's doing. It's hard to have faith. You know, when Jesus says, if you have faith the side of a mustard seed, you can move mountains, and most of the time you go, that's tiny. I know how big a mustard seed is. I actually think that's a lot of faith, because this is a hard world to live in. It's hard to trust in something that you don't see, that you don't always know and don't always feel the presence of. But 2,000 years of history, my friend, have brought us to this point. 2,000 years of telling this story, and we are still here. We tell the story to our children, knowing that we will tell it to their children when we are gone. What an incredible thing that Jesus is with you, with those you love, with those you care about, and with those yet to come. And that God will never abandon, never leave us alone, never forsake us, and be willing to travel the dark road of suffering and death on our behalf. As we enter Holy Week, 
let us recognize that the whole of Holy Week is holy. The whole of our lives, the whole of our faith journey, growing closer and closer to God, is holy. And that we are a holy people. Do we have room to grow? Yes. Do we have faith that needs to enhance and get deeper and, and enliven us? Yes. But we are a holy people. And on this Palm Sunday, may God's blessing be with you. May he remind you constantly of your value, that he gave up his life on the cross for you. Let us, with our whole heart, worship the Lord who has done great things for us. Amen. Let us continue with the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended to the hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our intercessions, whichever is most appropriate and comfortable for you. During this morning's intercessions, I will leave brief moments of silence where I ask that you add the own, your own prayers that you find in your hearts this morning. So let us pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering here at St. Stephen's. We pray for Helen, our bishop, and we pray for all ministers and people. This morning, we pray for the church. We pray that as Christians, our work for justice and reconciliation is grounded in scripture and in our common worship life together. We need to pray constantly for God's healing touch in our lives and in the broken relationships between Indigenous and newcomers peoples. Almighty and everlasting God, by your spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in our vocation and ministry, we may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask your prayers for peace and for goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. This morning, we pray for those in the Midwest United States who have suffered severe traumatic tornadoes and how many lives have been torn apart. We pray for our greater world, where peace no longer seems possible. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for the people, the families and soldiers who have lost their lives, homes and loved ones. We pray for the people of Russia, for those who have been imprisoned for daring to speak out against the horrors of war. We pray that 
this Palm Sunday, people will search their hearts and truly find peace. Almighty God, kindle and we pray in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth that justice and peace may increase until the earth is filled with knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers this morning for the poor, the sick, and the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. We pray especially for those who have asked for our prayers this morning, and we also pray for those whom we hold close in our own hearts but especially we pray for help, healing, and, com and comfort. We pray for Marion. We pray for Glenn and Peter. We pray for Verona and family. We pray for Agatha and Ashton. We pray for Lloyd and Ryan and Wyatt. And we pray for Randy. And we pray for those known only to yourself. We, we pray this morning for those in any need or trouble. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow and the strength of all who suffer, hear the cry of those in misery and need, and in their afflictions show them your mercy, and give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers this morning for the mission of the church. Pray for the coming of God's kingdom among all nations and all peoples. O Lord God, you have made all races and nations to be one family, and you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. Pour out your spirit on the whole creation and bring the nations of the world into your fellowship and hasten the coming of your kingdom. We ask this through the same, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to God alone. We pray that God may be glorified in all his saints. O God, the giver of eternal life, we give you thanks and praise for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all your saints. Grant to us and to all who have died in the hope of the resurrection a share in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fullness of joy in the fellowship of all your saints. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to Almighty God for all his goodness. You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. You are worthy to receive blessing and praise now and forever. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, appeared to his disciples, and he said to them, My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 183, In Jerusalem Jesus Rome. Gracious God, the suffering and death of Jesus, your only Son, makes us pleasing in your sight. Alone we can do nothing, 
but through his sacrifice, may we receive your love and mercy. Amen. 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 Today we're using... Oh. <laughs> All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Today we use Eucharistic prayer number three with a preface for Holy Week. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. By his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with all the hosts of heaven who gather around your throne and the Lamb, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death, into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Wherefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. 
We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom, and with whom, and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today. Communion in Christ's Christ's body body once broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we we have died with him, him, we shall shall live with him. him. If If we we hold hold firm, we shall shall reign reign with him. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God, our help and strength, you have satisfied our hunger with this Eucharistic food. Strengthen our faith that through the death and resurrection of your Son, we may be led into salvation. For he is Lord now and forever. Amen. Uh, can we have our announcements? There's uh, not a lot of announcements this morning, and if anybody in the congregation has anything to add, just um, maybe put your hand up and let me know. Um, first of all, I'd very much like to thank Father Michael Bruce for being here this morning. Um, it was a pleasure for him to be here to share communion with us, and more especially to share the Word of God with us. Um, very wonderful to have you, Michael. Thank, Thank you, you. For, Pleasure to be here. For, for braving the weather. It should be spring, but it still isn't, but <laughs> Easter Sunday. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, and just a note, um, speaking of Easter Sunday, our upcoming services, I'll just give the brief outline of them for you so you know what's coming up. Um, so Monday, Thursday, which is this Thursday at 7 p.m., uh, Reverend Beverly, and she's here today, there she is, is going to be leading the Monday, Thursday service at 7 p.m. here at St. Stephen's, and that is at 7 p.m. and the BAS Eucharist service. So thanks in advance to Beverly for, for doing that. Then on April 7th, 10.30 Good Friday service will be led by Lloyd Begley, and Lloyd's right back there as well, so he'll be leading the Good Friday service on Friday morning. And then on Easter Sunday, um, Pastor Patty will be here uh, to celebrate the Eucharist, BAS, on Easter Sunday morning. So that gives you a brief outline of the upcoming services in our Holy Week. Uh, just a brief note on the rectory update. Uh, they're just waiting for the countertop to be completed and installed, and then a backsplash can be put in. And then I think it says the basement drapes are being made, and when that's done, then they pretty much just need a cleaning crew to go in and clean up to uh, welcome our new incumbent whenever he or she shall arrive. So um, if anyone is interested in helping with seasonal decor, please talk to Val uh, this morning and um, have a chat with her about that. Um, Easter choir, um, it says singers are invited to join the choir for Easter Sunday. Uh, so I'll make a note of that. And they will practice after the Good Friday service at about 11.45 p.m. Right here. So um, that should take care of that. Um, Tuesday men's coffee meeting at Tim Hortons at 10 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. And the women's coffee meeting is usually here at Thursdays at 1.45. So um, if you missed any of these, uh, they're on your computer, TGIF, so check that out on, on your computer if you think you may have missed something. Um, but other than that, that is everything for announcements that I have. Is there anything else that I've missed? No? No? Doesn't look like it. Looks I'll, like I covered everything. So okay. once again, thanks a lot, Michael, for being here. It was a wonderful service. My Thank pleasure. You. Also, I'll be staying for coffee afterwards, so Ooh. if anyone has questions yeah. about diocesan youth programming or things that you would like to see in the future, you name it, I'd love to have those conversations with you and to share some of the things that are happening throughout the diocese in terms of youth and child programming. So uh, find me at tea. Great. And it's good you mentioned coffee because I just both for forgot about it, but Lois baked a bunch of goodies um, and got coffee and tea on. Uh, there's cookies and hot cross buns, so please stay and visit and enjoy fellowship on this Palm Sunday with us all together. Thank you very much. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 431.
our service of worship has come to a close. But our service to each other and to God's world begins renewed and refreshed. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Amen. Amen.